Okay, so I want to show you just a couple more things here. Uh, so, uh, you know, actually in my last video I had titled this graph uh, Frequency Distribution for In-State Tuition and uh, I didn't change my In-State Tuition. So let me come back here and go back to In-State Tuition uh, so that that graph isn't labeled improperly. Okay. Now I love watching this. When I change this data watch because everything is formula based everything will change dynamically everything changes automatically based on what we talked about All right. now um, the one thing I haven't really got to show you is in this width using the roundup feature or the ceiling precise feature I just did plus one uh, that should be something else that you look into uh, on your own Okay, go into the help feature under the file or go onto YouTube and look for either Roundup or Ceiling function and how to use those in Excel. I don't really want to use plus one here, although it's working for me at the moment. But I'll, just a second, I'll show you where it's not working. So one couple more things to talk about here, all right. Uh, is the uh, within one or two or three standard deviations that we talked about uh, that's the last thing on the uh, request for the project so um, for example um, let's say I'm looking within uh, one standard deviation right so I'm gonna treat this kinda like I did over here uh, with the classes I'm gonna have a lower limit and an upper limit so my lower limit is gonna basically be my mean minus one standard deviation and then my upper limit is gonna be my mean plus one standard deviation so in this cell I'm gonna say equals I'm gonna click the mean and I'm gonna add to that uh, excuse me I'm going to subtract from that one standard deviation and there's my lower limit and then this is going to equal the mean plus one standard deviation okay. let me format these cells here and let's you know let's actually do zero decimal places right let's keep these whole dollars right. so I got whole units here okay all right, now I'm going to center that too. That doesn't look very pretty. Okay. So here's my one standard deviation below the mean. Here is my one standard deviation above the mean. Okay. Now um, within two standard deviations. So let me change that within two standard deviations, right? So this cell is going to equal the mean, and I'm going to minus, I'm going to punch the number two. And then for multiplication, I use um, the asterisk symbol. So I'm going to do the mean minus two standard deviations and hit enter. And then this is going to be equal to the mean and plus two asterisk standard deviations, okay? Okay, let me format those cells. Let's make them, you know, zero decimal places. They have whole dollar amounts. Okay, and then let's say we do within three standard deviations. So my last one, right? So I'm going to have this equal the mean minus three times the standard deviation, and we will have this equal the mean plus three times the standard deviation. All right, so good conversation for us to have here. Notice that this cell here is now negative dollars, right? So our standard deviation is large enough so that I've now reached negative dollar amounts, all right? Now, obviously, I don't have negative dollars in my uh, data set, right? Um, but I'm just going to leave it there. I know that I'm looking at zero and I'm not looking at negative dollars all right okay so I'm gonna treat this similar to what I did over here really and I'm gonna find a frequency um, so I'm gonna find the frequency of all of these data values and this is my upper limit okay now let me just caution you know what's going to happen here. This is counting all the data values up to 22,240, right? So it's coming all the way up to here and it's counting uh, 22, well, actually I didn't rank these. Um, so I could, I could sort these 
and double check that this is working properly. Okay? Now, I want to not have up to this number, right? I want to subtract out. I only want to look between these two. So what I, I really could do here is subtract the frequency, just like we did earlier. Subtract the frequency of these data values, comma, up to this number. Okay. And I had an error in there. What was my error? I had I had enter too soon. I wasn't sure what that error was. Hang on just a second. All right, I'm not, I'm not sure what that error was. Um, I double click the cell again and come up here and I just hit enter and it's not giving me the error anymore. All right, uh, and it looks like it's counting it right. So from 10, 686, that would be starting here up to 22240, that would be to here. There's uh, 20 data values. Okay, I have all the way up to 22, subtracting out the first two that I'm counting, and there's 20. Okay, now this is relational, right? So this frequency that I'm counting here should be using this number and this number. Um, so I should be able to drag down. Now the error that's going to happen with that is that also this selection slid down a unit. So again, just to point out to you, this selection slid down here. So I could use dollar signs or just fix that real quick. All right. Now, um, not only um, is this guy going to be relational, All right. let me fix that one. Slide up and up. Okay, that should work. Let me make sure I fix that one too. Oh, look at that one. That one I didn't fix. All right. So look, it might have been smart enough uh, for us to come up here originally and put dollar signs in front of this selection. All right, um, and then that way when we slid it down we didn't have to deal with that relational piece changing every time. All right? So let me go ahead and do that. I just want to double and triple check everything because right, because eventually once I get all of this working properly I'm just going to copy and paste everything to all my um, sheets here. All right? So now those are fixated but the upper and lower bounds are relational. So that works for me. Okay. So now I can see all of these are dollar as well. Now, um, I had asked for a percentage. So this is technically the frequency here, right? and I want the percentage. Okay, So let's convert that to a percentage. Again, just like we did over here, is really a relative frequency. right? So this cell is going to equal the one just to the left divided by the total number here. Okay, So I'm going to click this cell and then put the dollar signs in front of it. Whoa, click that cell. There's my clicking. Let me come up here and put the dollar signs in front of it. And that way that will always be fixated on that number. So I should be able to drag down. This is relational. Yep, looks to the left at F15 right here. And then it looks to J9 and that's fixated with the dollar signs. So there's my percentage and let me just highlight them. Right click, format the cell and let me change it to a percentage here. And I don't need any decimal places. There's my percentage of data within one, two or three standard deviations. All right, so probably the last thing I want to show you here is now that I have built everything off of formulas. Here's the beauty of building everything off of formulas. As I already have shown you a couple times, I could just copy and paste the data into here and everything changes dynamically. Okay. Now, I don't really want to do that. Here's what I wanted. Here's my suggestion for you. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to right click on this tab that I had named in states. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this page. I'm going to have to come down here and I have to click the create a copy. And what I want to do is um, put it before what sheet. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, put it, well, I want to put it before sheet three. I could delete sheet three here or I could move it to the end. Okay. 
me put it before sheet three and there's my copy notice how it names it in state two so I'm gonna come down here now and rename this and I'm gonna call it out of state and then I can let me hit enter so here's my in state page here's my out of state page and I'm gonna go ahead and replace that data with out of state tuition so I can come over here can highlight my out of state control C come down here highlight control V and all of that information changes automatically boom and we are done with out of state and there's one last thing that I was supposed to do here and I was supposed to categorize the shape of my data um, so go ahead and do that okay what's the shape of your data so I could continue to do this right um, let me come here and let me move or copy let's create a copy let's move it to the end I guess and sheet 3 is blank I mean let me just go ahead and right click and delete this guy yes 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 all right, so here's my in-state copy. Uh, what's my next data set? All right, so let's see if we can do something unique here. I want to show you the, the rounding. Ah, here's a good idea. Let's do four-year graduation rate. And I want to show you that as, when I was collecting data, there was a couple colleges that didn't have a four-year graduation rate. In other words, they didn't provide it for me. Um, they didn't tell me that there was 0% that graduated in four years. They just didn't provide it for me. So let me show you how we can deal with this. So here's the beauty of Excel, right? So I can control C copy that I can come over to my my copy of in state and I can highlight all 25 and do control V and notice that there's some blanks there. Right, let me go ahead and rename this. Uh, let's call it four year grad. All right. So these are blanks. Now here's something really cool about Excel. As long as those are blank, it's not going to count them. Okay. Notice how my um, total frequency is 23. Right? I'm still getting 100% of my data, but that's now 23. Now also look down here at my frequencies. Because this is formula based and I refer to this cell, this is taking the frequency of 16, dividing by 23, and getting that 70%. Right. So pretty cool that Excel will just ignore those blanks. Now, I don't want to put a zero here because then that's going to change everything. That's going to change my mean. It's going to change my standard deviation. That's not zero. That is a blank. All right. So I'm going to leave that as a blank, and that's totally fine. Now, something else to point out to you here, some other things that I'm going to need to fix, because these are all numbers between 0 and 1, and I have two decimal places, let me go ahead and change, I think this guy, I had formatted to be one decimal place, all right? Let me change that to two decimal places, all right? And that will at least give me a little bit better accuracy here, okay? My median, I believe, I had formatted to two decimal places, nope. So let's make that two decimal places. And the standard deviation, I'm pretty sure, yep, I had two decimal places. All right, so we look good there so far. All right, so here's our min value. Right? Here's our max value and my number of classes. Aha, looks like we have a formatting issue here as well. This all looks kind of ugly, okay? I mean, all of these numbers are between 0 and 1. In fact, let me sort these. And we can see they're all between 0.05 and not, I don't even have a 50% here. So let's see what's going on with this formatting. Right. I may not have formatted this properly. See, I didn't format it. So let me format to two decimal places. And here are our data values. Aha, uh -huh. now something else for us to point out that we didn't fix properly. So um, our class width, we had used adding one. So look what our class width is, right? And that's creating all of these really large numbers up here. So first of all, let's fix this guy. This should not be uh, adding one, right? There should be my class width, okay? Now, look over here, look at this weirdness of negatives, right? So what had happened was when we defined this cell, when we defined this cell, we defined it as subtracting one from this guy, right? Because we were dealing with whole dollar values. I don't really want to subtract one, I want to subtract 0.01. So let's fix that, subtract 0.01, okay? And then check this out, we have the same issue we had originally with our rounding. 
right? Notice that we we have uh, only counted 22, not all 23 data values. We've lost this last data value here. So we need to use the roundup feature. We need to bump up our width. So let's talk about how to do that here. All right, so pause the video for a second because I just wanted to show you uh, that what I had done here um, was to show you the roundup feature. Right? So if I do roundup and I tell it I want to round to two decimal places, so I'm rounding up the number that I have, right? So I am rounding up uh, my range, right? Largest minus smallest divide by number classes, and then I put a comma and divide by two, right? So here's what's happening. Here's my range. Here's 0.46 minus 0.05, and then when I divide by six, here's the number that I get, and I'm telling it to round up, and it's rounding to 0.07, and it has fixed the issue that I have here now. Okay, so now what has happened is all of these have adjusted themselves. Remember, we were missing this last value, and it is now counting all 23. Okay, these videos in succession should address all the questions that you might have in creating this project. If there are any other questions that you might have, please ask, and I will hopefully be able to help you, or you should be able to search on YouTube and find some help in the meantime before you see me.